boom. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Had a small break, so that boom was because I'm actually in front of the camera again. It's been about two weeks, I think. Um, I've had a small break, which has been nice. And uh, although I have missed being in front of the camera and I've, I've still um, been connecting with people via uh, comments and things of that nature, but yeah, this is cool to be back in front of the camera. So welcome back, uh, Mate Talk 2023, pretty exciting. Happy New Year, everyone. Hope you had an awesome 2022. For those who are new, because I've it's been awesome seeing the, the channel continuing to grow, even without me posting, which uh, I thought, you know, the moment I stop, everything's just gonna burn, but um, it's still moving forward, which is very exciting. Uh, so for those who are new to the NFC channel, Mate Talk is a chance to connect uh, for you to ask me questions, for me to respond to them in real time. So you can ask me this week, I'll respond next week. Uh, and it just becomes a much more, I guess, personable way of connecting together. What is Mate? And why am I calling it Mate Talk? So I'm Argentinian and uh, Mate or Yerba Mate is a drink that we do socially in Argentina. And uh, mate in Australia means friend. So Mate Talk is friends getting together enjoying a beverage. I drink mate, you drink whatever you enjoy and uh, let's have some conversation about perfume and we also then venture out a little bit more. So it's about perfume but it's also about other things. The other thing, sage advice. You ready? <laughs> this is why you came here. I, uh, for those who are familiar, actually who's not familiar, Anthony Bourdain. Awesome, awesome man. Uh, very successful at what he was doing. There's an awesome documentary or a beautiful documentary called Roadrunner. Roadrunner? Let me just make sure. Yeah, Roadrunner. It's on Netflix and it really it chronicles, you know, Anthony Bourdain's life. One of the key messages that I got, one, the documentary is fantastic. One of the key messages that I got from that was someone to love and to be loved. And all, that resonated so deeply with me that you could have everything in the world you know, you could achieve all the successes you want, but if you don't have someone to love and someone, so someone to love and to be loved, it's almost a little bit hollow. So I've, for me, well, since watching that, that episode or that um, documentary, my mantra is someone to love and to be loved and therefore creating, you know, connections with people and Everything else is a cherry on top, but that's the core of it. Anyway, there is sage advice done. Let's talk about perfumes. <laughs> um, in 2022, I saw what, as the year was ending, a lot of people were uh, writing comments about their top 10 for 2022. I got an email from Fred, awesome man from the US. We know him as Megasoid. Oh, that's how he, uh, that's his um, YouTube uh, handle. And uh, he mentioned to me that his most reached for fragrance is this spectacular beast here. And that is Vida De by Orto Parisi. If you're not familiar with this fragrance, I did do an episode on it. Uh, if you like aromatic wood-like fragrances, but with a twist, I would recommend to you Vida De. It has this herbal component. There is uh, a freshness but it also has a very deep, uh, just wood-like base. I was trying to think, I think what is the right, but it, it just, it, it's, there's a, it's funny, it does have a masculine feel to it, I, I believe, but there's no reason why a woman can't wear it. it there's just a, a really deep wood-like base to this fragrance, but it retains those herbal aromatic components to it. On, the, uh, on this episode that I created, there was a comment that came through and I think this actually pinpoints it beautifully. And that is, it's like sleeping in a rainforest, and waking up in the morning and feeling that the forest has seeped into your skin. So you're getting components of the moss, the, the undergrowth, but not in a animalic or rotting kind of way, just the wood-like component to it. It is, there's a freshness to it. There is a, uh, a brightness to it, but there's also this this wood, you know, uh, intensity about it. Anyway, you got to experience it. It's one of those fragrances that just is phenomenal all year round, works well in winter, but also works well in summer. So this was Fred's most reached for in 2022. Made me think about this. And I thought, you know, I wonder what everybody else's 
most reachable fragrance was. I sent, uh, I was in communication with a young man called Sam. Now, I, I wanna point this out. I, I mentioned in an early episode that I wasn't sure how old Sam was, and I said maybe 17 or 18. He wrote to me, and he says, I'm 19, my brother. Um, and I love, as an older man, if someone says to me, you look like you're in your 30s. No one ever says that, by the way, but you look like you're in your 30s. I'm like, that is an awesome compliment, yeah. Um, but as a young man, you wanna be older. Someone, so if I said, yeah, had I said, Sam looks like he's in his uh, early 20s, he would have been like, thank you. Um, he's actually 19, so I apologize, Sam, that I sort of pushed you backwards. I should have pushed you forwards. Uh, 19 year old, and he, like I said, we were in communication. I asked him, what are the two most standout hits for him? What were the most reach for in 2022? You recommended two. One is this spectacular fragrance, which I'm wearing today. As I was um, preparing this, I could smell the fragrance moving around. And I must have said like a hundred times, I smell so good, man, I smell so good. And it's true, this fragrance just, it's, it's glorious as a masculine fragrance. This is Elysium Parfum. It is a little bit different to the Cologne version. Uh, the Cologne version tends to be a lot um, more citrus and brighter. I find that there's more woods. There's almost like a like a like a mossiness in the base. I'm guessing there's vetivers and things like that. But it does have a brightness when it comes to that grapefruit note that's in that opening. It's it's a happy scent. It's a joyful scent. It's there are equal levels of masculinity to it, but also a brightness that just. It's a great summer fragrance. So as a summer fragrance, amazing, absolutely amazing. On me, it does last quite a while, so I'm getting seven to eight hours on this. So if you're not familiar with Elysium, the uh, Parfum version of it, I'd test this one out. This is glorious. And as I mentioned, Sam's choice for 2022, and the second one that he wanted to put forward was Clive Christian X. This is another one that is, as a winter fragrance, Man, this, it just, this one makes me happy. There is a spiciness to it. There is a cinnamon note in there that's placed so well. I don't know what other notes are in there other than it's just ambery, spicy, cinnamon, but it just, it lasts forever. So this was, I, I use this if I go to a, a cool country or if I'm visiting a, a country that's in winter, this is my, it's just, it's always in my bag. Uh, so X masculine I agree with you, Sam. Fantastic fragrance for winter as a cool weather, just spectacular. So it made me think about me. What were my most reached for fragrances? Both of these I discovered when I was in Italy. And the first one, so this is in June, okay? So uh, in June, I discovered by uh, Paris Monte Carlo, the Neroli Mediterraneo. It actually got released in June. Uh, I bought this, as I said, when I was in Italy. I have a pretty healthy collection of fragrances, but if you look at, I don't know if you can see the level on this, I have gone pretty hardcore on this particular fragrance. I've used this quite a bit. Truth is, my wife also is in love with this fragrance too. So between the two of us, we have been enjoying Neroli Mediterraneo. This is an easy summer fragrance because you naturally think, you know, citrus is a summer sort of fragrance. I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer that uh, citrus fragrances work fantastic in winter. And so I have been using this over the cooler months too. So uh, as a Neroli fragrance, what I love about it is that it has that, the, obviously the citrus note, but it has the other facets of Neroli, which is the, the wood-like, the plant, the flower, the, the, so the white blossom, the white floral blossom. All of those components just combined together has beautiful lasting power projects wonderfully. It just, this is absolute happiness in a bottle for me. So this was my 22 pick, the Royal Humanity Down. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, the whole Paris Monte Carlo is phenomenal. Excuse me. I find that sometimes as I'm doing Mate Talk that I'm racing through this stuff. So I, I have a feeling, just give you everybody a heads up, that this might be a longer episode. I will put chapter markers down the bottom so you can just skip to wherever you wanna go. Um, all right, the second one. I want you guys to guess. <laughs> what do I, in 
my, my son-in-law who's an Englishman, whenever I carry on, he says, I keep banging on about things. So what have I kept banging on about in 2022 um, when it comes to a particular fragrance? Do you know? Yell it to the scream. I, I wanna, I, I can't hear you, but I want you to put it out there. Tony Iommi, <laughs> what can I say? So if you haven't, uh, if you're not familiar with Tony Iommi, I, I did an episode on this in the winter lineup. Uh, no, no, I didn't. I did it in the Zerjoff lineup. So as a recommendation of some awesome Zerjoffs, if you want to explore new ones, I put Tony Iommi as one of them. I want to let you know also that I have done, I've filmed it, we're in post-production right now. I've done an episode solely on Tony Iommi. It's going to come out in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so go into a lot more breakdown as to why this fragrance is, I was going to say a rock star, which is obviously in in commemoration of Tony Yomi, the rock star. Uh, but really, this fragrance, I cannot stop wearing it. Uh, to the point, my father says to me that I have more fragrances for seven lifetimes. Reincarnate, boom, 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 I come back seven times, I'm still not gonna go through the collection that I have. I bought a second bottle of Tony Yomi. all right? So it gives you an idea. So I've got enough fragrances to last seven lifetimes, but yet, I've got two bottles of Tony Yomi because I just, I don't want to run out of, I mean, this is one of those fragrances that, you know, the, you know how they, the, the segments, you know, fragrances for life. Well, this is my, I believe, my fragrance for life. This is one of those, there's nothing in, to, in my opinion, oh, hold on, itchy nose. In my opinion, there, I'm just smelling it now. Oh my gosh, this is, it's like, it's heaven. It's heaven. Um, everything about this fragrance is just spectacular. So my pick for 2022 works well in winter. So it is more sort of ambery, leaning towards winter. It is a dry woods. It does fall into a dry woods category. So therefore works fantastic in summer. All right, so you can use it at either or. I feel that there are some more ambery, uh, ambery tones to it. And I love wearing it as a winter fragrance or as a cooler weather fragrance, but it works well in summer too. So my two, oh, I was about to grab, uh, um, Instinctively, I was about to grab Elysium, which is also a great fragrance. Um, so my two is the Neroli and Tony Young. All right. I mentioned, sometimes I find that in, I'm, I'm gonna get, now I'm gonna talk about the channel. <laughs> You're like, what, what's about to happen now? So I'm gonna talk about, you can now, for those who are no longer wanting to, to know anymore, it's been great. Thanks for your company. Um, I'm not gonna be talking about perfume so much, but I am gonna be talking about the channel as a whole, some ideas. I'd love your feedback. So I, firstly, let me just, sorry, stop. Firstly, I'd love to know what your favorite picks for 2022 are. So ideally send me two. Um, two fragrances that you were constantly reaching for. I will do a tally. So I'd be curious to know if there's gonna be some double ups in there. Um, I'll do a tally, I'll present it next week, and I'll show, um, well, I'll just see what, you know, what were the, the big hitters for 2022 for all of us. All right, let me move on to the channel and the things that are sort of in the vision for 2023 and, um, and how, well, well, I guess the part that you guys will play in this, because I want your feedback on this stuff too. I mean, I love your ideas, I love your input, so, you know, yeah. All right, so let me, let me first, let me, oh, let me take a drink. Goodness me. You're seeing the, the it's almost like my brain is going like 10,000 miles an hour and uh, you're seeing all that play out. So the other thing about Mate Talk is that it's one continuous roll. <laughs> and the idea behind that is I want that rawness. So when I first came up with this idea, I want the rawness. I want you to see this rawness um, and that way, well, just like in a conversation, I think that's what the key of it, in, the, in, a, in a real conversation, you know, sometimes you start and then you stop and you think, what am I saying really? The only thing that's lacking here is engagement in the sense that I can hear you guys back. But anyway, in time, we'll see if we can, we'll find ways around that. In 2022, the, so I hit, all right, stop. The channel is about to celebrate two years. I'm gonna be two years old in February. The 5th of February will be my second birthday. In 2022, the, when we hit our first birthday, 
I was hoping to be at a thousand subscribers. I, prior to starting the channel, I'd been reading that it took 18 months to two years to create a thousand subscribers within a YouTube channel. Um, we had great success in that first year and we actually hit 4,000. I guess in my ambitiousness and maybe being a little bit cocky, I set the goal for 2022 to be 50,000. <laughs> Everyone I told that would laugh at me. They would actually go, I'd say, uh, you know, for 2022, the goal is 50,000. And their response was, like, what are you mental? Uh, how are you gonna do that? Um, I put pictures, so I, I'm very much, not pictures, I, I put quotes all around the office, I'm very much into reading things, sort of, you know, uh, words can be uh, a sense of power. Let me show you this. So I have this on my desk um, and I have different quotes that I say to myself. I, mean, I love this one here, which is, I will shut up, and shut up is in capital, and I will listen. This was early on <laughs> where I thought I knew all the answers. Uh, so, the, what I, so I can see constantly is I will shut up and I will listen. So clearly I was doing too much talking. Um, then uh, this one that I have currently now, so my, my current one is do all the things that you don't want to do. There are two exclamation marks on that at the end of that. So sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's like, oh, it's too hard, I'm too tired. It's like, shut up, man. Do all the things that you don't want to do. Um, so I had uh, quotes all around the office. Well, not quotes, but I had this one quote all around the office and it was, what I gotta do in 2022 to get to 50,000. I didn't get to 50,000. So we're currently riding at around 13, at the end of 2022, I think we came up to about 13.7. Actually, I think we're at the moment we're at 13.7, which is still good. That's I'm now. I'm now uh, making excuses, um, but it is, which is still good, but not the 50,000 that I wanted. The one thing that I realized is that I have no control over that number. And so there's a new thing that's in my brain. I'm going to share with you in a minute. One thing that I did realize, so I, looking backwards on 2022, we had an exciting year. So if I look, okay, we didn't get 50,000, but if I look at what we were, you know, what was achieved in a year, uh, it's, it's actually, well, and I'm not making excuses. I didn't get 50,000, I accept that. Um, but it's pretty exciting, some of the things that, as a result of that, you know, that charge, uh, some of the exciting things that evolved from that. One of them was, at the start of the year, connected with uh, the wonderful Mr. George Zaharoff. I wanna give big love to this man. Uh, that sounded weird, but you know what I mean. Uh, I am I'm so grateful for the support. I'm so grateful for his, uh, for his encouragement. Um, I'll tell you one story in a, in a minute uh, regarding that. But one thing that we did at the very start of the year was we did this fragrance adventure. And this was a new concept. So this is, hadn't been done before, or in the channel, I mean. Uh, hadn't been done before. So I was sort of, what, what is it? I was trying to find the rhythm of it. The intent was that I wanted to create, you see perfume is more than just, you know, spray and smell and it's about life. You know, perfume is about experiencing. So for me, a fragrance will, will communicate a moment, you know, will reinforce something uh, that I'm experiencing. And so this was my fragrance adventures. Um, and, I, and, and this is not only for me, this is for everybody that uh, it's about, yeah, you, fragrance is about connecting to things or to people, you know. And so I wanted to create this fragrance adventure that, you know, fragrance is more than just spray and break down notes and, um, you know, what's its longevity and all this sort of thing. Fragrance is about life. And so uh, George was wonderful to uh, pitch the concept and he was going to be in, well, he came to Australia and he was willing to participate. Now, let me just say, this man had just come off the plane. He was a little bit jet lagged and yet he gave so much of his energy, so much of his time to participate in this. He was such a great sport. And so thank you, Mr. George Zahara for starters. But you know, we did this, you know, this new concept. Then th th later that evening, we did a thing called an evening with uh, George Zaharoff. And uh, we did this in Oligarch. This also was a new concept in which we had a, an audience via Zoom. Everybody received sample of uh, the Zahara fragrances. And this time we were then 
uh, I guess, narrated or curated, not curated, we were uh, supported, we were informed by George himself as to how these fragrances came to be, some of the backstories behind it. It was a cool night. It was a really cool evening. If you missed the video, it's right here. Uh, but th this was a, a live event in that we had people in that session. So I've, that was, I mean, that was something new for me that the tech behind it was a little bit scary, but it actually worked really well. The next thing that we did because of the success of that and the success of people wanting to participate in this live event via uh, Zoom, we did an evening at Oligarch and Kevin and myself, we again curated some fragrances that we love from these three brands and uh, the brands actually supported us with free gifts and things like that. And again, people jumped in. It was now we actually, we, there's a thing in film called breaking the fourth dimension or the fourth wall actually it's breaking the fourth wall and the idea is how do we get the audience to participate with us um, how do we you know create that that engagement together so this time around we actually we had the mics on so we could hear people talking to us and we were able to to share it was a cool event this was another cool event that then oh that inspired another one i'll tell you that the next succession was I had an opportunity to go to sydney and I filmed in store, this too was exciting, alongside an awesome man called Michael Marzano. He's from Libertine Perfumery and we filmed in both the Trudon store and also the Santa Maria Novella store, which for me, Santa Maria Ma or Santa Maria Novella marks the beginning of my niche journey. So it was, it was cool to be in these two stores and discover this alongside Michael. We then went across to Italy and now Italy was a spur of the moment. I went to see Kevin one day and uh, he says to me, I'm going to be at Exxon's. This was in May. Exxon's was in June. And he says, I'm going to be in Exxon's in June. Uh, do you want to come? And I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and so I went back, spoke to my financier, for those who might know. It's my wife. And I said, I pitched this concept, you know, so the, the reason why we should go, be boom, boom. And uh, she said, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so in four weeks, we arranged all these different things. We went to Italy and had a chance to connect with Mel Fushuni, which for me was like a coup. I couldn't believe it. Mel opened up his uh, his atelier to uh, to myself and to Sandra. Had a chance to film in there. Connected with this awesome man. So we did a, a production with Mel. We did an awesome production with Paris Monte Carlo. And this is where I discovered uh, in the actual Paris store the Neroli Mediterraneo. We then also connected with Boyce 1920 in, in Florence and uh, had a chance to do also an evening with Boyce 1920 where we actually, we were filming in the historic store that they have and we sent that message or that beamed that back to Australia. So it was another live event where we connected with uh, the Aussies here. Um, then there was Exxon itself and I did the, the, um, the boutique uh, the boutiques in Milan, which was a lot of fun. It was hard work, but it was a lot of fun. Shortly after that, went to Malaysia, literally landed in Australia, and then uh, in like two or three weeks later, I was back on a plane, and we went across to Malaysia. I was able to film for both the Maison Francis Cujon fragrances. There's a, they've got a beautiful boutique there in Kuala Lumpur and also filmed the True Fit and Hill, which is the biggest True Fit and Hill store in the world. And who allowed this to happen? None other than the great Gatsby of Kuala Lumpur. And I did a video on, on uh, Antoine, who's an awesome man. Um, and then I guess the last big thing that was created last year was Mateto. I had this idea at the start of the year that because I was getting a lot of questions, a lot of different things were being asked. And I just, you know, people saying, you should try this fragrance, you should try that fragrance. Now I have a very strict, I don't blind buy. So I have this very strict uh, process that I adhere to, which is test, test for a week, see what the fragrance is like, bomb, bomb, bomb. And I realized that I was falling behind. People saying, you should test this, you should, test that, you should try that. And so um, by the time that I test and go, yeah, I really like it, et cetera, et cetera. I'll pick this one up again. I'm wearing it. You know what? I'm going to spray it because I want to smell that opening. Sorry, sorry. Because I, 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 I keep looking at it. Yeah. You got to get on this, guys. This is just next level. Um, 
So I test and I smell and you know, and I was falling behind on trialing things. So I thought, you know what? I, I need to create something that allows me to test things in real time, week to week. And that way I can, you know, give feedback and you know, have this conversation essentially. Uh, and that's how Mate Talk was born. The truth is, I mean, if you look at my first Mate Talk videos, I was skeptical that this was gonna last. I thought, well, at, at best, I probably have 10 episodes of Mate Talk. I think we're up to, this is episode 45 or 46. Uh, so we're coming close to a year worth of Mate Talks. Now this, so now thinking about my new catch cry for 23, and the new catch cry is, connect with me in 2023. I really want to find ways on creating a better, breaking that fourth, that fourth wall. How do we connect more? One of the serendipitous, uh, so there's, there's been a serendipitous moment. Um, is there a word serendipitous? I know serendipity. It's serendipitous, I'm pretty certain, yeah. So I was told as a young man, 19 years old, because someone said to me, oh, that's, ser that's um, there's serendipity in that. And I'm like, what does that even mean? You know, 19 year old. And, he, and the way that the person explained it was that serendipity is looking for a needle in the haystack but finding the farmer's daughter instead. As a 19 year old, that sounded really cool to me. Um, so the serendipity of this, this channel, which I didn't think, or I just didn't realize, is this connection, this ability to connect with everyone around the world um, on a conversation about niche perfumery, which is something that I absolutely love. I love anything to do with niche perfumery. And I've discovered that there are people as passionate and as uh, excited about niche perfumery as I am. I'll take Fred, for instance, a gentleman from the US, have an awesome connection with this man and having great conversations. Sam, a young man from the Netherlands. And then there's many others, Brazil, I mean, well, I'll, I'll, this, it's, it's great, it's, it's huge. So how do I, so the, the, the mission this year, so I'm not gonna, I'm not focusing on a number. Uh, the mission this year is how can I, what things can we do to connect even further? Now, one of the things, hold on, let me take a drink, sorry. And I also, see, taking a drink also gives me a chance to cheat and have a look at my notes. So some of the things that I, there, there are some things in play and I'll reveal more. So on our second birthday, 5th of February, I'll reveal some of the things that um, will be rolling out. Things that we've already started rolling out is memberships. The idea of memberships is it gives me a chance to curate samples and send to you. So if you're not a member, this is where or how do you, you can join. The idea is that every month I will select a, a lucky member and you then tell me what fragrances you like. So there are the Michael Edwards fragrance wheel, 14 families of fragrances of uh, family. There are 14 fragrance families. Tell me what is it that resonates with you. Then tell me a fragrance that you really love. I will then choose two samples and send across to you. The first winner to this was a young man by the name of Wilherme. He's from Brazil. He wrote back to me, samples arrived. He says that he likes amber, woody amber style fragrances. I sent him two samples, one from Luban, which is a awesome French Paris house. Uh, it doesn't get a lot of, it flies really way under the radar, but just go check out Luban. If you're not familiar with Luban, have a look at this episode I created on Iadol de Luban. Great place to start. Beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Has an awesome, awesome history. Now, I sent him a, a Luban sample. I also sent him a Zerjoff sample and he wrote back to me and he said that the Zerjoff one, which is Alexandria Oriental, brand new fragrance that has come out, is an absolute winner to the point that he says that it has the mmm baby feeling about it. <laughs> so, so yeah, become a member and I'll, uh, if the, your name is selected, I'll then select some fragrances to send to you. You tell me what you love. And uh, uh, the idea is that I'll send you something that's unique and then send you something. I told you this was gonna be a long one. My cart, my uh, camera just stopped recording for a second. Like, dude, you, you're saying too much, but I'm gonna keep going. 
All right, so uh, the other thing that we're doing, uh, although we did in 2022, was live international matter talk. And again, it's about breaking that fourth wall. Uh, one of the things that I, that I guess that I miss in this moment here is your engagement, you know, your feedback. And so created uh, in October, a live international matter talk where we basically invited everyone around the world to join in this conversation. It was an awesome event. We had three amazing people join us from around the world. One was George Zaharoff in Chicago. The other one was Carlos from Paris Monte Carlo. And the third person was Daniel from Fragrance Dubois. Now behind me, you can see that I created a poster and on that tray are those three fragrances. The idea is that I'm now going to, um, this is gonna be an annual thing. So we're gonna do another international live market talk in 2023. I will create a poster. Now, what does this poster mean? I want to, I'm, I'm, for those who are familiar with the channel, you notice that I always have different art behind me as I, as I share. Um, so I'm getting these posters uh, sp specifically made for the live international Mata talk. The 2022 was to commemorate that. I've printed 10 of these. If you're interested in buying it, you can jump on my website. Now, currently the website's being revamped, but you can still go on to this particular website. Now the pricing includes delivery anywhere in the world. I'm only printing 10. Number behind me is number 11. That's my artist proof. That's to make sure that everything looked good. So that's number 11 of 10. Number one and number two have already sold, which is pretty awesome. There are eight left. If you want a specific number, if you like certain numbers, if that's a, your lucky number. Uh, so anything from, two, from three to 10 is available just send me a message. I'll make sure that to send you that number if you want that. I'm going to make another poster for 2023. And that's really just to, well, I just want to commemorate. I, um, and I only, I will always print 10. Yes, I will always print 10. I think 10 keeps it nice and tight. Um, yeah, so that, that's what we're doing. I was gonna say, that's pretty cool, right? So my, my little, um, my grandson, whenever he pitches a concept, so he'll say, hey, you know what? We should go to McDonald's and after that we'll go to the playground. Sounds pretty cool, right? How cool? No, no. How cool is that? How cool is that? And so, yeah, so how cool is that? Um, now, the date for live International Mata Talk will, uh, I will announce it later, but it will be in October. Now, I just want to put a, a, a shout out to, we had um, friends from Bangladesh who got up at two in the morning to be at the the live international matter talk in 2022 you guys are awesome i mean that that's that was awesome you guys when you guys all jumped on at two in the morning i just thought that, that's just anyway that was awesome um 2023 so two things that are already in play memberships and also the live international matter talk which will happen deeper in the year uh, i have already booked and planned uh, so flights are booked, accommodations booked. I will be in Italy in March, and I'm gonna share a little bit more about what this means, but there are some ideas in there that I do wanna connect. Uh, we are doing some work with some of the other brands. We're doing a part two with Mel Fushuni, which is gonna be so cool. Uh, so I've got some, we were sort of talking about some ideas of other things that we can do together. Uh, there are some other brands that we're uh, looking at. So once all that has finalized, I'll share that with everyone. But we're, as I said, we're back in Italy in March, and then we have already booked and planned our there's a trip to the U.S., and that will happen in September. So I'm looking forward to being uh, both in the West Coast and also the East Coast. So I want to make sure that we cover both those areas. Also have some ideas, but as I move deeper into the year, I'll share that and let you guys know what the plans are in that in that regard. So there are there's one more plan that's in play at the moment. Um, and that's the possibility of being in France in October. So there's some exciting things. There's a, there's a big uh, trade show happening in Cannes. So I wanna be there for that. But um, yeah, there's some other things in play. Stay tuned. Bada bing. That's what is all there. Um, actually, the last thing I was gonna say, these are all my plans. But like the feather in Forrest Gump, I just, I just let go. I, I you know, I, I think my friend once said to me, I'm wedded to the process, not to the outcome. So work really, you know, just try to get things in place. 
and then let things happen as they need to happen. I always find that that feather, no matter where it goes, and even if it's like, you know, like, whoa, you're going the wrong direction, we should go this way, somehow it ends up landing in the right place. So these are the plans. The intention is uh, connect with me in 2023. And so, yeah, I'm looking forward to, uh, yeah, just creating this connection. Just know that I've now realized that I will never ever wipe the slate clean when it comes to comments. So one thing that I loved at the beginning as the channel was beginning to grow, that I would respond to comments and literally wipe the slate clean. They would, you know, YouTube would say, there are no more comments to be found, which I'm like, yes. Um, I've realized that as, well, there's a lot of comments coming through, which is super exciting, but know this, I will continue to answer those questions. It may take me a little bit more time. I will try to answer the ones that are more urgent, like sometimes I get, what would you recommend this or this? I'll try to jump into those, uh, but know that I will constantly be responding to, this is about connecting with me in 2023. So uh, I want to be responding to that, but I'm trying to find other ways. How else can we do this? How else can we break that fourth wall? <sighs> may you all have an awesome, 2023. I wish you great success. I also wish you that, yeah, love and be loved. I'm going to leave it at that. We'll see you guys all on the next Matador.